Good Sunday afternoon, everybody. September the 9th, 2018. Today I am making a mini Thanksgiving meal uh, consisting of some things that you would fix on Thanksgiving Day. And you don't have to wait until Thanksgiving to enjoy turkey and dressing. You can serve turkey and dressing all year round uh, if you want. So uh, come and join me and I'm going to show you how I make the cornbread dressing. First of all, in the bowl, uh, I got some cornbread. Now, what I did was I baked my favorite uh, recipe of cornbread in the oven, and then I waited till it got cool uh, before I crumbled it up. And then uh, I got a sleeve of saltine crackers and I crumbled them up. Uh, I always start uh, off by crumbling my crackers and my cornbread together and then I'm going to add my seasonings. I'm going to start off with some garlic powder. Some onion powder. Some Italian seasoning. Some ground sage. My late grandmother used to put ground sage in hers and that's what I like to do. Some black pepper. You can measure these according to your taste. I just eyeball it. And some salt. Now don't overdo it. Just depends on how salty your crackers are. Uh, if, if you use regular crackers you don't want to put too much salt in it. Now uh, it's so much easy easier to come in uh, before I add anything else to it and just combine uh, all the seasonings along with the crackers and the cornbread and you are good to go now when my grandmother was alive she put homemade biscuits in there she called it up homemade biscuit but I like the cornbread and the crackers the best. Now that's ready. Now what I want to do is I'm going to add two eggs which it'll help keep it together. I'm going to add some chicken that I cooked. Now let me tell you what I did to the chicken. Now I may not use all this chicken. I think that would be good enough right there. Now I took three chicken breasts and I boiled them on the stove. I started by running cold water in a big pot. I used that pot over there. Cold water. Uh, put chicken breast and let it cook until the chicken breasts were done. Let it cool. And by the way, uh, you want you would want to use the chicken on the bone. Don't use boneless, skinless chicken because uh, the chicken would be uh, tough. Then, excuse me. And then uh, what I did, I took when the chicken cooled down, I took the chicken off the bone and uh, I shredded it. Now I want to tell you about a little tip I, I have. Uh, save your uh, bones of any time that you have chicken or turkey uh, that you boil on the stove and that you don't eat off of. Uh, save that up and put it in the freezer. And when you get enough, uh, put them on the stove uh, with full of water and um, and cook them for a couple hours. And you have really good chicken broth. And you can freeze it in uh, freezer safe containers. Now, what I'm going to do next is... Uh, over here, I reserved the liquid that I cooked the chicken in, and I added some chicken broth. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch gears here. I'm going to move this casserole dish over, and I'm going to come over here. And I got this big ladle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ladle this in here a little at a time. 
and I'm going to stir it around. until it's the right consistency that I want it. Now, I'm also going to add some butter in here too. Now, I want you to stay tuned. I'm going to stir this, uh, continue stirring it, and I'm going to put it in this pan, and I'm going to show you what to do next, so you will want to stay tuned for more. Welcome back. Uh, I stirred everything until it was the consistency that I wanted it. So I put it in this bowl, I mean, I'm sorry, in this uh, glass pan, and I dotted it with butter. I got my oven preheated to 350 degrees, and I'm going to put it in the oven. I'm going to bake it for about 40 to 45 minutes, and what you want to look for is you want it to be good and golden brown, but you do not want to overdo the dressing because if you do, it will be too dry, and you won't be able to eat it. So I want you to stay tuned. I'm going to talk about my turkey breast that I fixed this morning uh, before I went to church. Welcome back, everybody. I just put my dressing in the oven, and it's going to bake for about 40 to 45 minutes at 350. Now I'm going to show you what I did this morning before I went to church. Uh, now I took a, a regular size turkey breast, and what I did was those uh, oven bags that you buy at the store. And I think I've got one up here. And I do. They look like uh, this. Uh, you can buy them at the grocery store. Now, uh, what I did was I put it in one of those uh, turkey bags and make sure that you follow the, the directions on the box. And uh, what I did was I stuffed the turkey breast with one lemon, about three cloves of garlic, and let me pull this garlic down here. And this is what garlic uh, looks like. Uh, you, you pull off two or three cloves, and you crush them, put them in the turkey breast, and then one onion. You didn't have to, I didn't peel the onion. You don't have to peel the onion or the garlic or uh, take the seeds out of lemon. Uh, it's all gonna come out uh, anyway. You, you won't be eating that. So what I did was uh, I put everything in the bag and uh, I rubbed the turkey breast with oil, I put some salt on there, and I baked it in an oven 350 according to the directions on the package of the uh, turkey bag. And when, when that was done, it took it out, let it rest it, and then I shredded it up. Now, uh, let me share with you another tip. Uh, the same way with chicken, uh, don't throw the carcass away. And don't discard the lemon, the garlic, or what you use. Save that, put it in uh, your uh, a Ziploc bag like this, put it in the freezer, and uh, whenever you want to make some homemade turkey broth, uh, take it out, put it on the stove, uh, run your pot full of water, and cook for a couple hours and put your turkey broth into some uh, freezer safe containers and your broth, your turkey broth and your chicken broth will last for a few months. So uh, it is so much better than store-bought broth. And if you have the time to do it, it is well worth it. Now, I want you to stay tuned. Uh, I'm going to be making some fried apples and I've already shown you how to make mashed potatoes. But I'm so I'm going to take some shortcuts, and uh, I'm going to show you how to make fried apples next. Welcome back, everybody. I just got through fixing the mashed potatoes; they're ready, set, go. Uh, I took the dressing out of the oven. It it looks really good. Now I'm going to show you uh, some fried apples. Now what I did, I took. A five pound bag of apples. These are the Gala apples. Uh, I got them on sale yesterday. Uh, but you can use Granny Smith, whatever kind of apple uh, that you so choose. What you want to do is, or what I did, uh, I took some unsalted butter, and uh, you don't want to use salted butter, and you don't want to use margarine, but use the real thing, unsalted butter. And uh, I put the apples in here. 
and I let them uh, cook, covered, covered with a lid, stir them every so often uh, for about 15-20 minutes. Uh, you can tell that they're starting to caramelize and you would want to choose an apple to cook that will hold up and not turn into apple sauce and that's not what you want. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take some brown sugar. Well I will here in a minute. Uh, I should have opened these uh, to start with. But I am going to take some brown sugar, some allspice. Please excuse me for shaking the phone and some cinnamon. So what I'm going to do is when I open up the brown sugar, I'm going to put probably about two or three tablespoons in there, just enough to sweeten them up, and let it cook for maybe a couple of minutes or so, and they'll be ready, set, go. Now, I want you to stay tuned. I'm going to make some gravy to go over the dressing and mashed potatoes.